Welcome to Jeopardy! And welcome, thank you to Sadia Farouk who made our emojis. Thank you to Ali and Arjun and Sumitra for technical support. And away we go. We need a category. Somebody give me a category. Your choices are music. Your choices, oh, I didn't want to do that. Your choices are music, school, band, bum, and history. So give me a candidate of category. I'm not hearing anyone. Could I have a category, please? We have school on YouTube. Yes. School and what what month what amount? Okay, let's do school three hundred. Hundred. One hundred. That was a hundred from uh, from the school for the school. Okay, then let's do this one. And the next one would be music, so. Okay, so we get an answer here and shout out or put it in the, the chat bubble. Anybody? Does anybody know the answer? Shall I just give the answer? Yes. Who is Judy Bloom? And our collective prize is an emoji. All right, we're going to go to music and what? 200. 200. 200. Natalie Sharp answered Judy Bloom on, on YouTube. Well, Natalie Sharp. Right, yeah, right yeah. Natalie, good job. Good so, job. So music 200, Arjun? Yes, it was 200. This is good. We will hound you. And maybe... Would, you, uh, would Natalie email. please... Paulette, please ask Natalie to share her email ID and uh, details. No, we don't have prizes for Jeopardy. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, okay. Because we usually give candy and I can't give everybody candy. So we will hound you and maybe even put you in jail if you don't know this famous singer who was filmed from the waist up to censor his gyrating hips during his third appearance on the family oriented Ed Sullivan show. So whom are we? describing who is there's, there's an answer on on uh, on uh, youtube good who gave the answer is natalie that and that will be elvis and yes. who gave the answer elvis elvis presley elvis yeah. presley yes the name of the person who gave the answer oh, okay natalie sharp natalie sharp bullet why, Natalie, you're on a roll. <laughs> Two in a row you got. That's oh, but uh, uh, Paige also answered that, uh, you know. And Paige, yeah. too. Good job, Paige. And here's our emoji. <laughs> We're sharing. This looks, like, like this looks like me. When I'm <laughs> going to the ice cream store. 
How about another category and amount? How about a category and an amount? Where should we go next, you Jeopardy geniuses? Okay, music. Music, and how much? Well, the first one came uh, in uh, for uh, 400. All right, then, here we go. Music, 400. <clears throat> and the next one is also music, but I'll tell you the value next time. Okay, so anybody know this answer? Who released Come Together in 1970? One of the best selling bands ever. I don't know if Mrs. Robinson would agree. Or oh, Alex. I got an answer on, on uh, Emily Jordan. Answering correctly on YouTube. Emily Jordan answered correctly. Who else answered correctly, Arjun? Oh, uh, on, on YouTube, uh, Natalie Sharp. Natalie Sharp. Boy, you guys are good. You know your pop culture. Who are the Beatles? Yes. Long day's night to get some of these answers. Here we have a wonderful emoji. That's how I'm feeling today. Just happy. Happy you're all here to play Jeopardy with us. And you have another category, Arjun? Yeah, I have uh, uh, music uh, for 300. Well, let's see what the question is. Okay, Jeopardy geniuses. So, Who's the artist? 1994 song. You, you don't know how it feels. And they changed the word joint into the phrase, let's roll another joint. A little bit of weed referencing there, I think. Anybody? Know the answer? Shall I give a hint? Yes. Last name rhymes with Batty. And if you're overly concerned about small things and make a big fuss about it, then people will say you are. Oh, okay. The, there's an answer from, uh, from uh, Facebook, and uh, that's uh, Tom Petty. Very good. And who gave us that answer? That's Paige. Paige, you're, you're doing really well at this game. Very nice. Let's see what emoji we get this time. So it's who is Tom Petty? I can't move this there. I can't. I'm going to move that so we can see better. Woohoo! Good job. We'll go back. Another category or the same category? No, the next one was uh, History 200. History 200. A government can give me liberty in its constitution, ought to have the power to protect liberty in its administration. What famous runaway slave, author, orator, leader of the abolitionist movement, author of a best-selling autobiography said these words? Geniuses, Jeopardy geniuses. Who knows the answer?
This person is very famous in Black history. His newspaper was called the North Star for a while. Does anybody know this author? There's an avenue in Toledo, quite a busy avenue or street with the same name. But I don't know if it's spelled exactly the same way as this person spelled it. First name begins with an F. Does, Would that be Frederick Douglass? Yes, very good. Who got it? Which one am oh, I? Okay, there is a, uh, okay, uh, uh, Ali. Holly? Mm -hmm. Very good, Holly. Ali, not Holly. Ali. Excellent, Ali. Who was Frederick Douglass? There's a big road in Toledo, Douglass, too. So there's our emoji. Well, that's not what I was supposed to do. There we go. So, next category, next amount. Well, the, there is a, a request to finish music off, but there are two options. So, I don't know whether that was 100 or 500. Well, we'll start with 100 then. Okay, let's do 100. Who sang Paper Planes? Censored by MTV, Late Night with David Letterman wouldn't use it because of gunshots and the rhythm track. So, anyone know the answer? This artist uses initials for her name. Just initials. And those initials are also used by the military when they cannot find soldiers after a battle. Oh, okay, there's an answer on uh, YouTube, MIA. Yes, that's right. So who answered right on YouTube? That's Emily Jordan. Very good, Emily. Did we get one on YouTube? That was YouTube, yes. We get one on Facebook? No. And not probably not Zoom either. But we got one, that's good. So here's the answer. And here's... Uh, Here's our answer, and here's our emoji. Ra ra, nice job. So, we'll go, shall we finish music? Yeah, yeah, that was a suggestion, so let's okay. go with it. Let's go with the suggestion. What's the name of this pop country band who got in hot water in 2003 for criticizing President Bush. And then many radio stations banned their music and groups held CD destruction rallies in wide open spaces.
Do we need a hint? Yes. Okay. <laughs> the name of the group is two words. The first word rhymes with pixie. Dixie chicks. Dixie chicks. Yes. Very good. Was that was that Moji? Yes, but I donated to a student. We're not giving anything. <laughs> That's true. Okay. <laughs> That's good. We're sharing the emoji prize. I love gifts. I lo <laughs> we can't give candy. I know. I know, I, I know you. I I'm sorry. You said that before. I'm sorry. I was just too excited. <laughs> well, it's always fun to be in the winner's circle. Yes. And especially for Band Book Jeopardy. Wow. <laughs> and there's the prize. So... Well, Moji, you would like emoji prizes. Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Moji likes emojis. Well, give us <laughs> That's a, a good one. <laughs> give us a category and an amount. Yeah, I don't see any uh, suggestions now. Uh, Moji, give us a category and an amount then. Where shall we go next? Me? Yep. Oh, okay. Let's go um, history for 400. History for 400. In late 2002, this former U.S. Attorney General spent 8,000 of your tax dollars on curtains to cover up two bare-breasted statues in the Department of Justice building. So do we know who this person is? He was behaving like an, and then add an H to it. That's probably not a very good clue. How about when you burn something, you get, and then add another syllable. Maybe we don't know this one. Should I just give the answer? Yes, please. Actually, you did hint uh, earlier, much earlier, even before the... I know. I did, and I had the tax wrong. Off with my head. I had this, the gist of it right, but I had the amount of money wrong, and it was in the justice building. But I think there have been complaints in Statuary Hall, too. Other years, that's come up that people have been offended by certain statues. There, we get a loving cup. Aren't we lucky? All right. Symmetra, give us a category and an amount, please. School for 200. School for 200. Thank you, Dr. Srinivasan. School for 200. This little bit of technology placed inside your television allows parents to censor the channels and programs that their kids view. Okay, Jeopardy geniuses, put on your think caps. We'll get answers from Facebook or YouTube. <laughs> we getting any answers? I'm sure our students will have something to say, the right answer. <laughs> well, here's a tip. Here's a clue. Geese, it's two words. And geese fly in this formation in the fall to go south. Anybody have the answer? Well, I will tell you then. V chip. I thought my clue was a really good one. It was, but we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
but we don't know it. And there's our prize. How about another category and amount? Let's remain with the school and uh, 400. All righty, school 400. Suzanne Collins, 2008 book about a girl in a post-apocalyptic world. It was a very popular novel, but opponents have called it anti-ethnic, anti-family, and occult and satanic. It's the third most challenged work in U.S. libraries. They also made film. Since it is over lunchtime, some people may be feeling hungry. Yeah, wow, mute. What did I do? May have this feeling. May feel this. We have an answer on Facebook, yeah, on YouTube. Good. What's the answer? Emily Jordan. Emily Jordan answered it. Do you want me to give give you the answer as well? Good idea. Okay. Hunger Games. That's right. Did we have somebody on the other venue? Answer it too. No, we don't have the answer, but uh, Paige has requested book 100 for the next category. Okay, so... I will give us the emoji. Woohoo, that's a pretty one. And then if I can get on the house, we'll go home and we want, which one did we want, Bookham? Bookham 100. All righty, Bookham 100. The U.S. Custom Office banned an unedited translation. This very popular collection of children's stories Children's stories from Persia, India, and Arabic folklore gave us Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. So, what is no one knows? I can't even see myself. Chance. Stories from Persia in. Oh, there's an error on here. Oh, there is. It's from Persian, Indian, and Arabic folklore. That's fine. So these are stories from Persia, India, and Arabic nations. So what? Did the work? Shall I just say the answer? Yes. I will give the answer. You like okay, that little Arabian. twinkle in there? What are the Arabian Nights? Let's see our emoji. Yeah! All right, what's our next category? And amount. At 100 Buckham, we have a couple left in school and a couple left in history and four left in Buckham. So where shall we go next? Okay, let's go to 300 Buckham. All right, who's the character in the Nathaniel Hawthorne 1850 novel? Sester Prince, so what is the novel? The book is still read and still banned. And the charge is always pornographic and obscene. Not suitable for this age group, that sort of thing. So what's in the what's the Hawthorne book? 
It is the same thing that the main character wore on her chest to symbolize. I have an answer on YouTube, Emily what? Jordan. Emily, so what's the answer? What's the scarlet letter? Bravo, good job, Emily. What is the scarlet letter? And we'll see the emoji. Ra ra, good job. So we have another category and some an amount. Four hundred book them, book them, whatever. Four hundred book them. Yeah. It's a children's horror book series containing monster blood. R. L. Stein wrote it. And for the decade of 1900 to 1999, it was 15th among the most frequently challenged books. The banners said it was too frightening and depicted occult satanic themes. So it was banned for being too scary. If you get cold, you might get these. Sniffles. You get cold, you might get these. Or maybe that's only a Wisconsin use of the word. <laughs> it's the, it's too, it's a compound word And the first word, if you filly, if you finish the phrase, what a silly. And then the second part of the word rhymes with lumps. So what a silly something rhymes with lumps. Anybody got it? Okay, here is the answer then. What is goosebumps? Wow. Yeah, I thought my clues were good. They were good. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> True, when you don't know, you don't know. So I get the loving cup. This is good. Well, actually, I have the answers, so I should know it. Another category and another amount. School band. Oh, sorry. School band. Wait. School band. And what amount do you want? 300 or 500? Yes, please. 300. Here we go. F. Scott Fitzgerald, 1925 American classic novel. It's inspired movies and plays. It's been challenged many, many times. And the Baptist College in South Carolina challenged it for its bows infested language. <laughs> References to sex, uh oh and also the decadent lifestyle of the characters. So what novel are we talking about? First word in the novel rhymes with crate. It's two words, well, it's three words if you use the with it. The something right <laughs> with crate and then another word. So what's the name of the novel? First word synonym for it would be la large or stupendous. Shall I just give the answer? I guess so. What is the Great Gatsby? There I am showing my joy. I love that. I love it. So which category next? 
Jeopardy geniuses. You want to take History 300? History 300 it is. So what dreamy, these dreamy words are said by a famous Austrian psychologist. I would just. So who's up the famous psychologist? From who would be Freud? Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud, yeah. Yeah, I I wanted to say Carl Jung, but it's Sigmund Freud. I guess a lot of them. I think Adler was into dreams too. I think a lot of them were. And there isn't that a great emoji with the little shoes? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the shoes just make it for some reason. I, I did not unmute myself and I was shouting Sigmund Freud, Sigmund Freud. <laughs> oh, Moji, you would No problem. <laughs> it's okay. How many would know that one? <laughs> okay, Dr. Tiamu, give me another category. Um, let's go for, um, let's go for History 500. History 500 it is. So, it is evident that any restriction of academic freedom impedes rational judgment and action. Who was this relatively brilliant physicist with the cool hair? Yeah. The cool hair. Looks like he put his thumb in the light socket. Oh, okay. What is this? Um, Edison or... They're going every which way. We should know this one. We should know this. All of us. <laughs> yes. Relatively. Relative. Okay, sorry. The person. Relativity, uh, Thomas Edison, no. Shall I just give the answer? Yes, please. Who was oh. Albert Einstein? Oh, yes, the hair, the hair. Yeah. <laughs> Usually in the room we get it, but it's harder online. The hair. Yes, and, and look, here's an emoji of Einstein. Yeah. That's pretty oh, funny. But... Okay, so we've only got a few categories left. And then I will be giving away stuff again, so. School 500. School 500. So this suspense horror writer, four of his books have gotten onto the top 100 banned and challenged books. Kujo's at 49. His shining personality will make you feel like you're in Salem's lot. It's a couple names of books that he's famous for. He just, not too long ago, this one's really good. I really like this one. I read it over Christmas break one year. Stephen King. Oh, I just told you the answer. Oh, well. <laughs> Mr. Mercedes. I really like that one. All right. I like The Stand, too. Blah, blah, blah. Yep, and he's written quite a few really compelling books. So, we'll go back. We have two more options here. Where do we go next? Three more options. History 100. History 100. Now this one we should get 
<laughs> a famous political and spiritual nonviolent leader from India. Gandhi. Gandhi, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> Got that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good job. Now we have two in Bookham. 500. If all printers were determined not to print anything till they were sure it would offend nobody, there would be very little to print. All right, so this is an American scientist, writer, inventor, and patriot. And the $100 is a $100 bill. Had he invented the lightning rod? He was very prolific. He was, he was quite a genius, this man was. There was a chain of dime stores named after him for a long time until they were replaced. Okay by other stores. First, he lived in the era of the American Revolution. He wrote an almanac. Edison? No. No. Not Edison. This is the American Revolution. Oh, okay. Much earlier. Okay. Yeah. First name rhymes with Dan. Dan. Ben Franklin. Ben. Yeah. Ben Franklin. You got yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Just Yay. guessed. Ben I just guessed. <laughs> Ben Franklin, yay, and we get a chicken emoji. Yeah. <laughs> we have one more, so I don't even have to ask. Yep. You can't have this thing just because. <laughs> so, this is a U.S. humorous. When you thought of this one, I like it. Drying his meal on a raft or a steamboat when he thought of this one. He also knew how to get people to paint a fence for him. And a raft. Later in his career, he wrote with another author, he wrote The Gilded Age, and that became the designation for the time period of roughly after the Civil War until the beginning of World War One, And Mark Twain? Yep, Mark Twain. Oh, oh good. Good, good, rara. Twain. Can you get a Twain coin and surprise? <laughs> That's nice. Okay. So, we can go out of Jeopardy now. I can stop sharing.